Grand Park. Intro-wise, that's the, where you want to be. You want to walk out. The last thing the guy says before he brings you out is, if you need to go to the bathroom, do it now. <laughs> <Grand Park. laughs> as, as good as an intro gets, apartment or otherwise. <laughs> this is weird, right? And we're all in uh, some dude's place. <laughs> Uh, it's across the street from that crazy skeezy motel. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, but it's right out the window. It's what they call the city center motel. It's like where dudes go, you know. Dudes that uh, are trying to have sex with not, you know, with their wives and stuff. Like uh, other ladies. Uh, that's where they do it. The guy who lives here knows. Uh, he knows what I'm it's crazy too, cause uh, there's people sitting up in the in the loft, and uh, I well, <laughs> uh, this is weird. It's like I can see everybody's face. <laughs> this is like you know, like at Christmas when like your relatives are like, ah, come on, do do your talent. <laughs> Get up there and do one of your sketches. <laughs> But one of the, there's two medals hanging off of the railing, and one of them's for the Sparta race. Uh, and I did that, so I, you should take that down. You should take the medal down. Like, if I did it, it's not that impressive of a thing. <laughs> and I finished it, too, because they got rules in it. Like, uh, do you guys know what it is? No. It's, uh, it's a race where... I, you go, like, you have to run up a hill and you have to, like, go under barbed wire on, and, like, mud and you gotta climb up a wall. And, uh, it's all crazy. It's crazy. You voluntarily do it. And, uh, I did it because it was my dad's birthday. And I, uh, I signed us up under the team name, The Gilmore Girls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing is, is if you don't complete one of the missions efficiently, then they make you do push-ups or burpees. Do you guys know what a burpee is? Yes. They make you do, of course, everybody in here is like so good looking. They're all like, yeah, I know what a burpee is. <laughs> like, if you asked me that like a year ago, I'd be like, yeah, and I'd be thinking about blimpies, the like sandwich. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I know what burpees is. Uh, I'm not an idiot. But the guy, like, I couldn't get over the one of the walls, and the guy was like, do 20 burpees. And I was like, fuck you. And I just kept running. And he can't do any, he's not the boss of the race. Uh, so if you got the right attitude, you can really make it happen. Um, I also got in here tonight, not, you, nobody came and got me. I texted, like, I'm here, and then nothing. And I just stood outside until a couple came in, and they were like, Oh, and one of them recognized me, and I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to a comedy show, maybe? <laughs> or my murder. Uh, more likely, my murder. And then they were like, who's in 305? I was like, somebody creepy that you don't talk to ever? Um, so, here we are. <laughs> And uh, I just can't stop looking at this apartment. I would be so scared to have people over in my house like this, because, you know, whatever, I got all sorts of weird stuff in my bathroom. Not like super weird stuff, but weird enough that I don't want people just, hey, well, he's got that weird infection or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want everybody to know. Um, yeah, my name's Graham Clark. <laughs> this is my beard that I grew, right? Yeah, because I was done with, like, uh, employment, right? And, uh, and also intercourse, right, ladies? Uh, yeah, a lot of long, lonely nights when you grow your dream beard, it turns out. And it's fine, I don't mind, because I'm in with a whole new, I got new friends. I got new pals everywhere I go, every city I go to. I'm in with homeless dudes everywhere, coast to coast. If I'm walking down the street and there's a panhandler asking everybody who walks past, like, excuse me, sir, you got spare change? Excuse me, ma'am, spare change? Sir, any spare change? And then I walk by? Nothing. Right? <laughs> Nothing but like a quiet, 
respect, right? <laughs> it's like, ah, I see. Somebody got himself a shirt. <laughs> and everybody here is pretty good looking. That's the weird thing. It's weird. It's hard to be in Vancouver and be out of shape and stuff, right? Because, you know, there's people that like climb a mountain for no goddamn reason. Uh, like, there's not a flood or whatever. You're not being chased up a mountain. You just go take a picture. <laughs> uh, and I always say to myself, like, ah, I'm going to do something to be in shape, to be like one of the people here in Vancouver. Or I realized uh, a couple of months ago, uh, I could just move. Right? I could just move. I could, if I was in Regina, right, I would be like an eight, right? If I was everywhere I go in Regina, people would be like, who's the new guy? <laughs> oh man. Did a gym just open up his head? Oh, that guy's the most in shape guy I've ever seen. In Regina. <laughs> But I don't know how you're supposed to get uh, in shape, right? When, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Especially when Pizza Hut keeps coming up with new crazy twists <laughs> on crust, right? Wonderful <laughs> crust. <laughs> oh, Pizza Hut hates regular crust so much. <laughs> we got a vendetta, it's like regular crust killed the CEO of Pizza Hut's dad. He's like, I'll make sure there's no more regular crust. I'm gonna put cheese in that thing. Yeah, city center motel. Uh -oh. Those walls could talk, am I right? Um, like, okay, last year Pizza Hut came out with a pizza. It was a hot dog crust Pizza. Yeah, exactly. What? That, there was a poster in the pizza hut near my house that just said, We did it! <laughs> Why? <laughs> On whose authority, pizza hut? How dare you? A hot dog crust pizza. Who is the target market for your hot dog crust pizza? Like the real, like, bag of shit on the go, right? Like a guy who's like, I don't have time to eat a pizza and a hot dog. <laughs> Help me, Pizza Hut. <laughs> Melt a popsicle on there, too, so I don't have to have dessert. Crazy. And I never tried the hot dog crust pizza. But I was fascinated by the physics behind it, right? Like, was it one, like one continuous hot dog? Just like a steering wheel, bro. Just like, 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 just like a meat hoop, right? And I talked to my friend. He lives in Scotland. And he said, hey, I tried that hot dog crust pizza that you won't shut the fuck up about. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, what way is it one? <laughs> Continuous hot dog? And he said, no, 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 it's just a series of regular hot dogs. You know, like the type you'd get in a can. And I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Hot dogs in a can? <laughs> What? Did you know that Scotland is outpacing Canada in hot dog technology? I was blown away. I was like, how does, what? How does that work? And he's like, oh, you know, they're just hot, regular sized hot dogs, but they come in a can and they, they're in water and you can get regular water or salted water. And I was like, who's getting the regular water hot dogs in a can? Whose doctor was like, you gotta start taking care of yourself, man? He's like, all right, I'm gonna make the switch. <laughs> Regular water hot dogs in a can for me from now on. Oh, my friends are gonna make fun of me. They're gonna call me health nut, but I don't care. Uh, I, uh, I never tried the hot dog uh, crust pizza because I'm actually a uh, vegetarian. 
and I know that you're like, hey, I don't think you're uh, doing it right, man. <laughs> I think mean, that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Are you deep frying all the vegetables? <laughs> Do you think pudding skin is a vegetable? <laughs> oh, I love pudding skin. Ah. Uh, I became a vegetarian, uh, like, uh. seven years ago. And, uh, is anybody else here a vegetarian? Yeah? How long have you been vegetarian for, if you don't mind me asking? Mm, about ten years. Ten years? And what, what led you to it? Uh, ethical choices. Ethical choices. That's, that's usually the number one that I hear. Uh, for me, uh, I, uh, liked a girl who was a vegetarian, <laughs> and I was like, weird, me too! That's weird! <laughs> I love eating uh, eggplant or whatever the fuck you think tastes like steak, you know? Uh, has it been okay for you? The vegetarian? It's been alright? Yep. Alright, good. Man. Have you ever tried the fake meats ever? Uh, some of the ground rounds are okay. Yeah? I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> I tried a vegan beef jerky one time. Uh. Yeah, I don't know what got all the way to being vegan. But was like, you know what I miss? <laughs> Chewing on a spicy belt. That's what I miss. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's chewing on a thing for hours. <laughs> I feel uh, like they should have had somebody on the team who had had beef jerky once, right? Just to guide them through the what is and is not the beef jerky. Just to go like, this is not right. <laughs> it shouldn't be wet. I know that. <laughs> what are we all doing after this? Where are we? Trying to get a room at the city center. <laughs> One room, please. One hundred keys. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not sharing it with anybody. I need a hundred keys. <laughs> um. I, uh, this is a funny thing, is, uh, uh, for a long time, I worked, uh, up just up, uh, the street, over on Camby Street at a, uh, video store. And it's weird that there's still video stores in, uh, 2014, right? Uh, cause, like, sometimes, uh, kids would come in with their parents, and it would be like being in, like, a heritage park. Have you ever been to one of those? Like where old, the people dress in old-timey clothing and they're like, if you wanted to make margarine, you had to go to the field or whatever. <laughs> I never can make margarine, I have no idea. Uh, but that's what working in a video store in 2014 felt like when people would come in with their kids, because kids would be like, what? <laughs> what is this place? And you would have to describe to them like, wow, you know, in the time before time, <laughs> if you wanted to watch a movie, you had to leave your house. <laughs> you had to go to where the movies were. <laughs> And sometimes you would get there and say, one copy of this, please, and they just wouldn't have it. <laughs> so you just wouldn't be able to see that. And then you and your partner would stroll around the video store for an hour, <laughs> hating each other. <laughs> Did you ever do that when you were at... Uh... <laughs> Younger, I, this was the thing my brothers and I used to do, is we would go in the video store and then we would pick like a horrible, like a horrible movie, like an erotic movie for 40 year old women or something, and then yell out across the store, they got it, it's in, we'll get it, your movie you want. Anyways, we were fun kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but sometimes people would come in to the store and they wouldn't even know what they wanted, they would just say, what's good? And uh, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Back to the Future. That's what's good, right? That's my favorite movie. And I was, yeah, I was like, you can never go wrong with recommending Back to the Future. And I watch it like once a month, I would say, uh, just to like check in with Marty and the Doc. And the thing about Back to the Future is I've watched it so many times that I've started to like pick apart the plot and ruin it for myself, so I can't even enjoy it anymore. Mm. And uh, if you've never seen Back to the Future, 
Uh, fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Like, I can't even imagine a conversation with you. Because you'd be like, pomegranates or something. And I'd just be like, oh. you know what I mean? Like, you'd have some weird interest. Um, but <laughs> Back to the Future, if you haven't seen it, the basic plot of Back to the Future is uh, Michael J. Fox plays Marty McFly, who Ooh. travels from 1985 to 1955, and in the process, he interrupts his own parents meeting and falling in love, which means in 1985, he may not exist at all. So he has to make his own parents fall in love so he will exist in the future, which he does wonderfully. He is fucking amazing. He's the coolest guy who ever lived in 1955. He invents skateboarding at one point, and he helps invent rock and roll. But he beats up the school bully, and he fucking helps this couple fall in love. And then all these years later, they have a kid who grows up to look exactly like the coolest guy they went to school with. And it never comes up, right? They never mention, like, doesn't <laughs> Remember the coolest guy we ever met? <laughs> Doesn't our son have like a passing reset? Isn't he wearing the same outfit <laughs> that that cool guy used to wear? And I just, I can't forgive it, you know what I mean? Because I remember the coolest guy I went to school with, and his name was Brody Pearson. And he didn't give a shit about anything. Right? He, was fucking, he was the best fucking coolest guy. Like one time, the principal of our school held an assembly and was like, if anybody kicks a ball on the roof of the school, everybody is losing their ball privileges for the rest of the year. And Brody just picked up a ball and was like, Bah! Like he didn't give a shit. And we loved it. We were like, yay! Brody! And like one time in history class, there was a teacher was like, please tell us who the first inhabitants of Canada were. And Brody put up his hand and he was like, was it you? And we were all like, yeah! <laughs> what an amazing dude. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, a mat, like, oh, if I someday decide to get married, right, and have a few kids, and one of those kids grows up to look exactly <laughs> like Brody Pearson, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did you sleep with Brody Pearson? <laughs> Cause I am not mad. I'm not mad. We got Brody Pearson's kid. Yay! <laughs> what a cool kid. <laughs> All right, uh. let's wrap this up, right? We got places to be, um, right? We got church in the morning. Everybody, church in the morning. Uh, Saturday church. That's right. Uh, that's how I do it. I do Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I do every day. Um, <laughs> I, uh... Oh, you alright? You okay? That's okay. It's just some dude's place, you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't even know what dude it is. That's the crazy... Do you? That's weird. That's weird. I, I was told that nobody knew that it was... He's uh, What's that? He's out of town. Oh yeah, this is totally a uh, kid of plays house party. Like, oh, I broke a vase and he's out of town and we gotta raise enough money to buy a new vase. I don't know. <laughs> was that the plot of house party? Maybe? <laughs> that possible that that was the plot uh, of every other 80s movie? Parents are out of town. Crazy party. Um, all right. I wanna wrap this up with where we go from here. Um, I uh, here's the thing you guys may or may not know. Uh, and I just found it out recently. Uh, that Earth is uh, running out of helium. Did you guys know that? Yeah, you knew that? I didn't know that. I was a cockeyed optimist, just living my life. I had no idea. Helium for everyone, I used to say. I was gonna get it tattooed on my back, I was so confident. We are running out of helium, and uh, it's, I didn't know that it's used in uh, like scientific procedures and research, and I don't want to be, you know, like part of the generation that has to explain to the younger generation that needs helium why there's no helium left, right? Like, I don't have kids, you know, so I don't really give a shit, but I, like, you know, like, I have a nephew or something. And, and, it, and he needs helium. Like, I don't want to have that conversation when the kid asks you, like, tell, tell me why 
Oh, <laughs> what happened to all the helium? And you have to be like, uh, uh, well, basically, we used most of it to fill up balloons. The kid will be like, for transportation? He'll be like, not even close. We used to fill up balloons and just give them to each other to like cheer each other up, you know? Sometimes they say get well soon right on them, which is ironic because you'd be getting well sooner if we had some helium. <laughs> Not the kid all ask like. And then what would you do with the balloons? And you'll have to be like, oh I don't know. <laughs> We just let them go into the atmosphere and like wave at them. Bye! Bye, balloon! And then it would come back down six months later and like choke a duck, right? We truly were the greatest generation. And the kid will be like, Is that all that you did with the heat? And you'll have to be like, no. <laughs> no, sometimes we would just breathe it in <laughs> to make our voices go out. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, weird apartment full of people. This has been great. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Have a good night.